we'll be starting with the uh, origin of rod and blot hemorrhages and common causes and how to differentiate and when to refer so these are the dot and blot hemorrhages as we all have seen in our books and in patients so these are dense dark red are sharply outlined and are seen in a disorder that are that affect the prevenular deep capillary layer and if we see origin of this hemorrhages they start with the microaneurysm that occurs secondary to capillary wall outpouching due to uh, parasite loss and they appear as a small red dots in the superficial retinal layers and there's a fibrin and red uh, blood cell accumulation and uh, microaneurysm lumen and the rupture produces uh, blot and uh, flame hemorrhages so if we see for the position it is not in blot hemorrhages occur as a microaneurysm uh, rupture in the deeper layers of retina such as inner nuclear layer and outer plexiform layers Uh, this appear similar to the microaneurysm if uh, they are small and the fluorescent angiography may be needed to distinguish between the two and they are also called intraretinal hemorrhages because uh, they are uh, uh, deeper in deeper layers so if we see common diseases and differentials so uh, the location size and the distribution of hemorrhages provide the uh, uh, etiology and uncover the underlying systemic disorders such as vascular diseases hematological disorders dyspepsia infections trauma and hypoxia so i'll be uh, uh, naming few of the uh, pathologies we, uh, which we see common in our uh, uh, practices uh, one is diabetic retinopathy we usually see uh, not in blood and uh, vitreous hemorrhages in that and there will be bilateral and diffuse and distributed in posterior pole as we can see here like uh, this uh, image on the left is having uh, uh, macular edema as well as a flame shaped hemorrhages and dot and blot hemorrhages image on the right uh, that is uh, also having the almost uh, hard exudates uh, flame shaped hemorrhages uh, soft exudates and with that there are a lot of dot and blot hemorrhages so if we see in retinal vein occlusions uh, there will be a diffuse intraretinal hemorrhages in all quadrant and uh, central uh, retinal vein occlusion and sectoral distribution will be there in branch retinal vein occlusion so these are the uh, ultra wide field images uh, the left image uh, is showing uh, branch retinal vein occlusion and the right image is showing uh, tomato splash appearance in uh, crvo uh this is one more uh, uh, good case which we got after uh, covid this patient had covid and post covid uh, after a month patient had a vitreous hemorrhage uh, when we did the surgery uh, we found out uh, this patient was having brvo and post brvo patient had a vitreous hemorrhage this is a silicon filled eye uh, ultra wide field image so uh, in ocular ischemic syndrome uh there will be mid peripheral intraretinal hemorrhages and retinal neovascular lesion can also be seen as uh, we can see here there will be a uh, uh, blot hemorrhages uh, extending uh, up to the mid periphery and in sickle cell retinopathy there will be intraretinal salmon patch hemorrhages uh, black sun uh, sunburst choroidal ischemic uh, scars can be there and cf and neovascular lesion can be there which might lead to vitreous hemorrhage and they are seen usually bilaterally so in left image we can see the uh see fen neovascularization and then uh right image we can see this uh, salmon patch and uh, choroidal scar uh, and uh, just a foveal telling jet asia uh, also we can see this uh, dot and blot hemorrhages they are typically in uh, central area with choroidal scar can also be there and if we see in ocd we can see the vitromacular attraction also so differential diagnosis according to age group also uh, we can do in neonatal ages the hemorrhages from birth trauma including the spontaneous uh, general delivery vacuum extraction and double instrument delivery can also uh, can cause an infant and children child abuse coats disease persistent hyperplastic uh, uh, persistent vitreous retinopathy of prematurity retinal dysplasia hypertension myopia can also cause this in systemic hematological or cardiovascular disorders infection even uh, vitamin c deficiency can do it uh, in adults diabetes hypertension leukemia blood dyspepsia hypoxia uh, high altitude lung syndromes high myopia posterior vitreous detachment retinal tear and detachment can also causes so if we see as a treatment this is not a, as a disease if we uh, see for the treatment we usually have to go for the uh, basis why it has started so most require a detailed systemic workup to detect the underlying cause of the hemorrhages management consists of the ob- observation and treating the primary cause and intraocular management to reduce the ischemic and neovascularization sequentially following the hemorrhages 
and most dot and blot hemorrhages are not vision threatening and usually found on the uh, posterior poles sparing the fovea and can be observed hemorrhages seen in retinal vein occlusions are not uh, uh, not treated at per, per se but the retinal edema and the neovascularization which follows as a sequela needs to be treated so if we see as a uh, take home message sometimes this dot and blot hemorrhages can be tip or tip of the iceberg we need to investigate for the ocular findings uh, by oct octa ffa or uh, for blood investigation and if we might need to refer to the patient uh, to the specialists uh, as a retina surgeon physician endocrinologist dermatologist according to the differentials and timely referral can save the patient from potential complications